Right. I was tempted to stop um last time, but I feel like I can do one more video before I stop. Um in the interest of your well being. Right now <clears throat> now that we understand all this estimated output, it is now time for us to <clears throat> talk about hypothesis testing. Now here from your chapter one of Gujarat where he lays out the structure of classical linear regression analysis, you start with the hypothesis, you make a mathematical formulation of the model, then you transform it into an econometric relationship, you gather the data, you estimate the data like we have done here, then you do hypothesis testing. So that's what we want to do, just to illustrate. <clears throat> now, here, I just want to show how you do it, although in class we will discuss all the niceties of the theory behind hypothesis testing. But the general idea here is that <clears throat> the null hypothesis denies what theory says, and the alternative hypothesis states what theory says. So, we want to test the slope coefficient um, of education. We want to test if education has a statistically significant effect on education. So the procedure is that we state our now hypothesis, which is written as H naught, and um, you can write in words. Or you can just write the word education or if the, the, the original regression was written as an equation with beaters, you can use the beaters. So here I will use words H naught coefficient of education equals to zero. Okay, so let's start with what is called a two-sided test although it doesn't make much sense in the context of education because theory is very clear about the direction of the test. But yes, I want to illustrate um, various kinds of tests you can do. Uh, so, so what the now is saying here, by saying the coefficient of education is zero. So if you say this coefficient is statistically zero, it means you are only left with the intercept here. Education has no effect on earnings at all. That's what it is saying. Then H1 says coefficient of education is not equal to zero. I'll write not equal to zero as this equal sign and an exclamation mark, otherwise you could just say not equal to zero, okay? Not equal to zero. Now, so, so in other words, the alternative is claiming that surely education has some effect. The effect may be positive, may be negative. That's why I'm saying the two-sided test doesn't make much sense because there is no way education can have a negative effect. But here I'm doing it to illustrate what a two-sided test will look like. Okay, then let's decide the level of significance. In this case, let's say our alpha is 5%. We are working with 5% level of significance. Then we have to find our critical values, usually called T critical. Uh, this T critical is given by T. It will have the degrees of freedom, which is your N minus two in this case, because we only have two estimated coefficients. And the alpha is 0 0.05, okay? This number here, will appear on the two sides of the distribution, the negative side and the positive side. So you can 
call it plus or minus if you like. Um, oh my goodness. There, there is the trouble. Okay, so it's just T. I, I didn't realize that once you put a minus there, you will be in trouble. N minus 2 and 0 0.05. Okay, that's that's the structure, and we get this from the tables. Okay, now <clears throat> then we must state the decision criteria. How how do we decide? How do we decide whether to reject or not to reject the now hypothesis? Now, if T observed is greater than or is greater than T ops T critical or less than minus T critical reject H naught. Okay. Um I'll show you just now what we mean by that. Now Otherwise, you fail to reject it, okay? Then, what what we are talking about there, which obviously you should be aware of from our discussions in class, uh, but I can, I can show that very quickly. Where are those drawing things so that I can draw something for you? Uh, I don't know where they are. I wanted to draw something for you so you can see. Anyway, let me, I'll, I'll just explain it later on. Right, so then now you have to calculate the, the T-OBS, which is your statistic. And you remember that it is always your estimated coefficient over its standard error. That's how you do it. So in this particular instance, it is equal to our estimated coefficient is this number here, and we are dividing it by its standard error there, and we get 3.58. Now, <clears throat> how do we get our T critical here equal to hmm, want to save space? We now go to our T table. Here is the T table. Um, this is a single tail okay this is an upper tail or you can have a lower tail if you have both sides of this distribution shaded then we are talking about a two-sided test because it will have it will have a tail here and another tail here okay so in the way we formulated our now hypothesis we actually have two tails so we have a tail this side and a tail that side now, <clears throat> here is what is going to happen. Notice the note below. They said the smaller probability shown at the head of each column, the numbers you see at the top of each column there, is the area in one tail. That is like what you see there. The larger probability is the area on both tails. Okay, so let's let's come here at five percent here, for example, uh, where you have twenty degrees of freedom. Here is your twenty, and here is your five percent there, and this is the number. Um, is this a pencil? Pen. And this is the number they are talking about. Okay. And we are looking at 5% with 20 degrees of freedom. That's the information they explained. So now, to get the critical T value 
For 5% in one tail, we have to go under the column with 10% here for both tails, okay? So we know that if we have another tail here, which is 5%, okay? Which is 5%. This side. If we have another column which is 5%, it means this 5% plus that 5% equals to 10, this number here. So then again we will make use of 1.725. There will be minus 1.725 here because we are to the left of 0 and 1.725 there, we are to the right of 0. But if it is a one-sided test, a 5% one-sided test, we look at this number on top, and again, it's the same column. So what are we going to do? <coughs> um, what we want to do is to come back to our regression. Uh, we have... Uh, how many degrees of freedom do we have? We have, um, let's write that down. We have 50 minus 2, which is 48. So that's 50 minus 2, which is 48. And here, because it's a two-tailed test, the 5% level of significance is split into two, so that it is actually 0 0.025 this side and 0 0.025 the other side so with that you come to your table and you look for 50 now um 50 is a lot bigger 48 is closer to 40 than it is to than it is to this this uh, 48 is closer to 40 than it is to 60. So we are going to work with the value that aligns with 40 since we cannot find 48 in the table. And we want 5% in both tails. That is 2.5 here, 2.5 there. If we add them, we get 5%. So at the top, the top row here, 0 0.025 is here. This 0 0.025 is area in one tail. So this 0 0.025, you put it there. Then you need another 0 0.025 this side. When you add both areas, you get 5%, which you see there. Okay. So now we want 4 under that column with 0 0.025 and you get 2.021. That is the T critical value you need. So you come here, <coughs> you write that critical value, it is 0 0.2 point, did I say 0 to 1? I hope it was 0 to 1. Um, uh, what do we do here? Two point zero two one correct, and it is both positive and negative, <clears throat> right? Now, if you look at, let me just try to 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 show you what's happening. So we have two numbers here. We have minus two point zero two one, and we have two point zero two one. Okay, these are the two critical limits. Okay, so if you look at 3.58 where is it would you say that it is <coughs> bigger or smaller than the critical values so here this is your 2.021 okay and this is your 2.021 0, 2, 1. This one is a negative because it's the negative side. I forget about this one. 
and the number we calculated is 3.5 something okay what you see is that 3.5 something is far into the shaded region which means it's far bigger than the observed t now because of that because of that we come to our decision criteria we said that if our observed t which is this one is bigger than the critical t which is that one we must reject h naught okay so what is our decision since t ops is greater than t critical reject h naught and conclude that education does have an influence on earnings on earnings at the five percent level of significance okay so you have confirmed that education really has an effect on the level of earnings because then now it said education is no effect at all but now you are rejecting this claim that education has no effect because the evidence you found from the test says that it has an effect okay right so i will stop here but before i do that <clears throat> you will probably see this thing in a in a in a two variable regression like this your your t this t we calculated here is actually the same thing as the square root of the f square root of the f will be your t you see that three five eight three five eight so that only happens in a two variable regression is a, a direct relationship between the the, the t and the f then secondly <clears throat> uh what else do i need to mention here which could be of importance okay so this is our t observed which is what we calculated there um now an alternative way of doing that is to look at the p value okay generally we work with 10% 5% and 1% levels of significance okay now what you can do is to convert these numbers into percentages just to convince yourself of what you are seeing okay so we are much happier we are much happier if the p value we get here is smaller than 5% or even much better if it is smaller than 1%, generally we work with 5%. So this p value here is much smaller than 1%. So the smaller it is, that is the closer the p value is to 0%, the stronger the evidence against the null hypothesis. So here it is very small. So we can say reject the now hypothesis because the p value of 0.08% is much smaller than 5%. Okay? So there is strong evidence to suggest that education has an effect on earnings essentially that's the idea so so that's the this one would not be significant if you are working with five percent because look it's 25.88 percent so the p value is the exact level of significance at which we can reject the now hypothesis okay and so this level of significance there is quite strong is very small which means we have very strong evidence against the now hypothesis i will stop here <clears throat>